Hi, my name is Molly Hetledge, and the title of my capstone is Energized Heat Pump Program Addressing Barriers Regarding Renewable Energy. And I did my internship with King County. So decarbonizing buildings is an important piece in the fight to climate change. And one of the main sources of greenhouse gas emissions comes from our home, home heating and cooling systems. One possible solution for efficiently heating and cooling our homes while reducing those emissions is heat pumps. In 2022, King County is launching a pilot program to retrofit up to 150 homes with high efficiency electric heat pumps that will reduce on-site greenhouse gas emissions. The program will provide 90 to 100% cost coverage and focus on low and moderate income in English second language households. One of the great benefits to heat pumps is the fact that they supply cooling, which is a feature that can also be used to supply climate resilience, especially in the summer. In the summer of 2021, heat waves which hit many parts of Washington hard. Many of the 121 people in Washington who lost their lives in the heat waves were elderly or low income and did not have air conditioning. Heat pumps can be very expensive, so programs like this that provide vulnerable populations with this, this technology are extremely important. My research questions consisted of what are the potential costs and greenhouse gas savings from switching to low zero carbon heat pumps and what are the potential barriers that the energized heat pump program could face. To gain information regarding costs and, gas, costs and greenhouse gas savings of heat pumps, we reviewed scholarly sources and data tools such as the EIA REC's data tool. In order to gather information regarding potential barriers, we interviewed eight subjects who had backgrounds in various types of utilities, weatherization, and heat pump backgrounds. The interviewees were asked a series of questions which were that were consistent throughout in order to identify 17 barriers. A survey was then sent to the same eight subjects and listed the 17 barriers that were identified and asked how impactful they would be on a scale of one to five, one being very little impact and five being very big impact. The scores from each barrier were then added together to get the total score, which is reflected in figure one. I'm now going to blow up figure one a bit more so you can um, get a better idea of it. So from the data collected, the most impactful barrier identified was equipment and supply delays due to supply chain issues, which had a total score of 32. The second most impactful barrier would be the cost of upgrades to panels and other infrastructure with a score of 31. And three barriers had an equal score of 30, which were language barriers slash using culture appropriate language, higher prices of equipment and supplies due to inflation, and contractors not being available due to how busy they are. Now I'm going to go into the most impactful barriers a bit more. For equipment and supply delays due to supply chain issues, this is, in, this is because currently the market for equipment and supplies is experiencing delays for up to six to eight weeks, which is caused by COVID-19 shutdowns, which still have not been solved. Raw materials have also been very scarce, which requires suppliers to try and play catch up. Moving on to the cost of upgrades of panels and other infrastructure, when it comes to heat pump installation and cost, individual home infrastructure can play an important part in how effectively a heat pump can work. Some larger or two-story homes may require more than one heat pump in order to effectively heat the entire home. If some homes only had one heat pump, this could lead to the consumer being extremely unsatisf unsatisfied with the heating capabilities of their heat pump. When looking at the barrier involving language barriers and using culturally appropriate language, we found that it is very important for us to communicate terms in a way that is contextualized correctly when translating. As one interviewee stated, gas in different languages can mean different things. So when you're talking about gas as an energy source, you have to be specific. In relation to supply chain issues, there has been a spike in the prices for materials and supplies related to heat pumps and their installation, leading to a general increase in costs. Materials such as steel, aluminum, copper, and plastic are expected to continue to have price increases for months to come. We also found that there is currently a shortage of contractors, which makes contractor availability a challenge. Next, I researched the potential greenhouse gas emission savings from heat pumps. And when switching from any fuel type, it is shown that there would be a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. The highest greenhouse gas reductions would be seen from fuel oil at 78%, and the lowest reduction would be seen from electric resistance at 56% which is reflected in table one.
Lastly, I researched the potential monthly bill impacts from switching to heat pumps. Through my research, I found that homes currently using natural gas systems could potentially see bill increases when switching to a heat pump. Although natural gas systems could see bill increases of 1%, the other three types of fuel, of fuel systems, which include gas, electric resistance, fuel oil, and propane, would see bill savings from 37 to 53%, which is reflected in table two. Through my research, we found that since King County is specifically installing heat pumps in English second language households, it is very important to make sure that the outreach tools that are provided are translated into the primary non-English languages spoken in the pilot program. Heat pump programs are a great way to provide low income households and Anglo second language households with efficient and cost effective energy, especially ones like this program, which provide cost coverage because of the high price point of heat pumps. As discussed before, since heat pumps apply a cooling feature that provide climate resilience to vulnerable populations, especially since the energized heat pump program is focusing on low and moderate income and English second language households. Lastly, I would like to thank my site supervisor, Nicole Sanders, my faculty advisor, Christine Bay, and my cohort and my friends and my family. You have all been extremely supportive. I will now take any questions.